Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. In front of me I have the Alfero Laser 1 and it is basically a miniature version of the Ortu Laser Master 2, which in my book is a great thing, especially since also the price is miniaturized. So in this video I will thoroughly test this machine and I will also compare the three different options that are available for the laser attachment. There are the two high powered uh, versions, one in short focus version, one in long focus with air assist and then there is the lower powered version which is 100 bucks cheaper but also has a really cool feature up its sleeve. Now for this closure Alfero did send over uh, this laser for review free of charge uh, but they have agreed to my review terms and no money has exchanged hands. If you like me, you weren't aware that uh, Alfero and Ortur are actually the same brand. Uh, Alfero is just kind of their budget line. But uh, once you kind of look into this uh, later, it becomes very obvious. Because, uh, well, the motherboard itself is the exact same one as on the Laser Master 2 Pro. Which is a great thing since that was the main thing that I really liked about the Laser Master 2. Also, the laser diodes used inside of the two higher powered ones are exactly the same as on the Laser Master 2 Pro and the long focus version is almost exactly the same as the one that chips on the LM2 Pro. The thing that is different though is that instead of a big rectangular frame, uh, this one is a lot smaller. Uh, you have an engraving area of 180 by 180 millimeters, which uh, is good for all kinds of uh, small projects, but it's not going to uh, be cutting out any big panels. But the size difference is really just about the only uh, main difference there is between this machine and the uh, Laser Master 2 Pro, which is uh, usually around 150 bucks more at the very least. So you are uh, getting a kick-ass laser for uh, this price. But of course, uh, this is not the only smaller, cheaper uh, laser out there. So. Uh, I recently reviewed the Neji Master 2S, which also had very great features and especially once you uh, equip it with the lower powered laser, they are basically the same price and at that price point, well, uh, it starts getting a lot more interesting. But I'm already getting ahead of myself. When you get this laser, it comes all pre-assembled in the box, so all you have to do is plug it in, uh, plug in your laser, focus it uh, with the handy included measuring gauges. They are all fixed focus uh, lenses. So just place the thing on your uh, what you want to engrave, adjust the height, and you're good to go. Software-wise, they are compatible with all the major ones, like uh, Laser Gerbil or like uh, Lightburn, which is what I used for all of this testing. Instead of Lightburn, just make sure that you have set up the S values uh, from 0 to 1000. Uh, as by default, it uh, selected 0 to 256 for me, which, uh, well, only gives me a quarter of the power of the laser. And notice that after engraving a bunch of uh, things that, well, somehow this power does not add up uh, until I uh, notice that, well, I'm only engraving at a quarter power. But after adjusting the power uh, using the two high powered ones, it is a breeze. And the results that I get in cutting are essentially the same as on the uh, LM2 Pro, which is no big surprise since it is using the same laser. Now, since I've already mentioned it twice, I do want to quickly go over the differences. This here is the long focus version, which means it has a 50 millimeter uh, focus distance, which is kind of the standard uh, in most uh, of these uh, laser engravers. And, uh, while it is very similar to the one that is uh, on the LM2 Pro standard, uh, it has this little uh, cone on, which just kind of takes the cooling air and focuses it down a little bit. It's not really an air assist, it's more just kind of keeping the smoke out of the way. Uh, it's definitely better than no air assist, uh, but it also comes with this air nozzle and uh, some little uh, tubing that you can hook up to a small air compressor or an air pump. I'm using a hobby air compressor for like airbrushing. It's very nice and quiet and it works a treat. This very small, almost free uh, upgrade is such a great addition as it means that you don't have to uh, come up with an air assist solution yourself. And uh, the difference in cutting is just phenomenal. The results you can uh, get with an air assist, uh, power wise is almost the same. You might be able to go slightly uh, deeper, uh, but the big difference is that instead of having uh, super burnt uh, edges all around and uh, thick char that, that is gonna uh, make your hands all dirty afterwards, all the edges are super clean and uh, there is uh, no smoke spillover anywhere. This means that you can uh, use 
parts that you have cut with an air assist directly from the laser. Whereas other parts that you did not cut with an air assist, I would definitely recommend to do uh, some sanding and some cleanup just uh, so it looks a bit nicer. Now, where the short focus version has its advantage is that uh, it is able to focus the laser uh, to a bit of a finer spot. And it's just something due to the optics where if you focus it uh, closer, it is easier to focus it on a small spot, which means that for things like engraving, this one does uh, deliver a bit more power in that one specific spot. The output power is the same between the two, but if you take the same power and uh, distribute it over a larger or smaller area, you do get a difference in effect. You can also notice this uh, on cutting thin material, like cutting uh, 3 or 4 mm plywood uh, with the short focus version, uh, you can get away with ever so slightly, maybe like 10% uh, faster speeds, uh, but of course you do not get the air assist. But once you get past kind of four millimeters, the shorter focus distance also means that uh, the paths diverge quicker and uh, the laser comes out of focus more quickly. What this means is that uh, on thicker material, uh, by the time you reach the bottom of the material and cut through that, the laser is quite out of focus, so uh, it does not have as much power anymore. So cutting thicker material, uh, definitely the long focus version, is beneficial. But if you want to, for example, engrave on anodized aluminum, which I was able to do with uh, this laser, then the short focus version is definitely superior since you have a bit more punch there. But uh, don't worry if you choose one or the other, you will still be able to basically do everything. It's just that they have slightly different strengths in different areas, but there's definitely no need to get them both since they are definitely the most expensive uh, part of uh, this uh, whole system. Wattage-wise, uh, I actually find it really refreshing that Alfero is not even uh, advertising any uh, 20, 30, 40 uh, watts uh, as many other manufacturers do, since that's just bogus claims. Instead, they are listing the actual laser output uh, power, which is between 4.5 and 5.5 and uh, watts, which is just about the most you're going to get out of any uh, diode laser that is using a single diode. On the lower powered version, which is 100 bucks cheaper, you only get 1.6 watts of laser output power which is a lot less and means that you are not going to really be doing any cutting. Also for engraving, you are going to be going a lot slower. At this price point, uh, it competes directly with something like the Nature Master 2S, which definitely has the stronger laser. And uh, if you want to do cutting at a low price point, you don't care as much about speed. Uh, the Nature Master will be better in that regard. Uh, but the one thing that this laser can do, that not even the two uh, higher end ones can is it has an extremely tiny laser focus spot. When doing tests on th these uh, kind of uh, painted uh, metal uh, business card kind of thing that are included with all the lasers as samples, uh, they're really great as uh, you can get a very high contrast uh, between what you engraved and what you didn't and uh, since it's a very fine coating you can get extremely sharp edges and I was able to get such fine lines on there that uh, were completely unachievable with any of my other lasers. So I suppose the one application where it would actually make a lot of sense to get this one is if you want to do very fine engraving on things like uh, thinly painted metal or uh, engraving on leather. What you do start to notice though is with such fine engraving lines uh, the overall inaccuracies of uh, these kind of uh, wheels uh, on uh, aluminum extrusion uh, with uh, kind of coarse belts, uh, you do start to see some small artifacts that are just from the mechanical motion uh, that don't really matter if you as have a laser spot that is larger anyhow, so you're not going to do super fine designs. But if you really start to look closely enough that this uh, it becomes a big advantage in laser spot size, you do also start to see a lot more of the artifacts. With that said though, let's get to some actual data of what I was able to achieve. The maximum engraving speed of this machine is 5000 millimeters a minute and uh, engraving on wood I was able to fully use the lifestyle. My settings for en engraving these pictures were at 5000 millimeters a uh, minute uh, at around 70% uh, output power. This gives really clean results and allowed me to have a very small step over of only 0.075 uh, millimeters, meaning that I have uh, 15 lines per millimeter, which is uh, five more than I usually do on this most lasers. And that just overall uh, result in an extremely crisp and clean image at still very decent speeds.
With the two high powered uh, lasers, the engraving speed for an image uh, this size uh, is about 20 to 25 minutes. But when you go back to the uh, smaller, lower power laser, uh, you do have to cut the speed in half. I was only engraving at around 2000 millimeters uh, a minute at full power. And uh, even though I set them back to 10 lines per millimeter, it took around 45 minutes to engrave the same image. So I'm really not sure if uh, this is uh, such good of an option. But the actual result that you get from it is very clean. So if time is not really an issue to you, then this is still a very good option. When it comes to cutting, I uh, started with all the recommended uh, speeds and feeds. And uh, I actually noticed that uh, they tend to be quite conservative. And in a lot of cases, I was able to go faster than uh, the speeds that they advertise. But I also noticed though, is that they tend to go very slow the thicker the material goes instead of doing more passes, which is definitely much better since you get a lot less charring, you get a cleaner cut and the smoke has more time to escape out if you're not using an air assist. So I wouldn't really recommend going slower than 200 millimeters a minute uh, with wood just to get a clean result. Cutting soft plywood, I uh, tested all the way up to eight millimeters, uh, which I did at four times 200 millimeters a minute. And uh, the edge is actually really nice. I did this test with the air assist, uh, which uh, is why this turned out so nice, but uh, it will also probably also work without the air assist since you are doing enough passes that the smoke has time uh, to escape out. Moving over to acrylics, you can of course not in, uh, cut any uh, transparent acrylic since the light just goes straight through since it is in the visible spectrum and not in uh, IR spectrum. And But engraving and cutting opaque acrylic or uh, dark tinted acrylic is perfectly fine. And I was able uh, to cut this red acrylic that I've tested on other machines as well at uh, pretty uh, decent speeds. I did. Uh, three times uh, 200 millimeters a minute, which is quite slow, but it does take quite a bit to melt that. Though what I also noticed with acrylic is that actually turning off the air assist really results in a cleaner result. The cut itself is fairly similar, but on the back side where you kind of punch through the material with the air assist, uh, the slightly uh, liquefied uh, plastic gets kind of splattered around, which then solidifies in kind of these fuzzies that you get on the back. Whereas if you don't have an air assist blowing the liquid acrylic all over the place, uh, you just get a slightly uh, nicer results with just maybe small marks on the back. I'm also somewhat uh, embarrassed to say that I finally figured out uh, why all the laser manufacturers are including these uh, kind of whiteboard uh, black markers uh, with the lasers. And uh, what you can do with that is you can uh, just kind of uh, draw on uh, transparent acrylic or any other material where that you usually could not engrave on and then uh, engrave on that. And the results are not great, but they certainly are visible. You want to make sure that there is no dirt on the back or anything since otherwise you will also engrave in the back since most of the light is still just going straight through. But where you mark with uh, the pen, uh, you do get a uh, marking of the surface and afterwards wiping off the, the pen, you see your engraved image. It's not what I would recommend for everyday use, especially since this pen is really crappy. Uh, and it's the same one that everybody includes. I would probably just end up getting a proper uh, like brand name uh, erasable pen if you want to use this technique more often. But it is something that you can uh, consider if you want to just uh, engrave a one-off thing on transparent acrylic. And these are all the materials that I have tested uh, with these machines, but uh, they are more listed on the website. And uh, you can also check out my video about the Laser Master 2 Pro where I've tested some other materials. Since uh, the laser diodes are so similar, uh, the materials you can cut are basically the same as those. And even the speeds and feeds are very similar. Now in conclusion, uh, this is a great laser for the price. You basically get all that the Laser Master 2 Pro offers except for the larger engraving area at a much more affordable price. So for getting into the hobby, this is a great laser. But as with all the other uh, budget lasers out there, they have one problem in common and that is you need an enclosure. If you want to engrave stuff indoors, you need an enclosure. There's just no debate about it. Now, if you want to learn how to uh, build an enclosure for it, you can uh, check out the video I did for the Laser Master 2 Pro. There I explained it in very general terms, uh, as simple as I could possibly do it, so you can adopt it to whatever laser you are using. That enclosure is also what I used to do all the testing for this, as I 
it is getting kind of cold outside so I did not want to do it outside and I did not want to have all my windows wide open so I actually put this laser inside of the other laser uh, just barely fit in there and uh, performed all my tests this way. That's also why I don't have as much footage as it's kind of hard to film in there and it's not really as nicely to look at as if it's out on the table. But I do value my health and did not want to suffocate in here. And with that we are at the end of this video. If you liked it leave a like down below. If you have any more questions use the comments down below. I will try to get back to you and answer any of your questions. With that said thanks for watching and until next time.